Hey everyone, welcome to How Humankind Works. This is going to be an ongoing series looking at some of the mechanics and interactions in humankind, all the stuff going on behind the scenes that may not really be obvious when you're just casually playing through and trying to win the game. I'll be answering some questions I've received from people, as well as doing some exploration of my own in the series, and if you have any questions you'd like to see answered, leave a comment on this video. This episode, we're going to be looking at production costs. Specifically, how do production costs increase for quarters, and what is the actual effect of production cost reduction, both for units as well as for quarters? If you don't know already, I have a Discord where you can come and hang out. We talk about the game, organize multiplayer, and just try to have a good time. The link's below, so feel free to join us. I also still have a bit of a COVID cough, so apologies if there are any weird edits or coughs or whatever. I'm trying to put this together in between some bouts of fatigue, so it's going to be a little rough. So I started up a game on Hamlet's normal speed, just to test how this stuff works. I chose the Mycenaeans in the Ancient Era to help test stacking unit cost reduction because the Mycenaeans get minus 20% reduction on their units. So at the start of the game, I avoided constructing any districts until I had the influence to attach a couple outposts to see the effects of additional outposts on construction costs. So here's what I found. So attaching outposts increases the production costs of quarters, but not extractors, infrastructure, or units. There doesn't seem to be a consistent modifier as to how much the cost actually increases here. So there is some function governing the production cost increases, since it's not just a static percentage modifier or a static flat increase. You'll notice that going from no outpost to one outpost increased the production cost of the Cyclopean Fortress by 24%, but of Agriculture and Maker's Quarters by 35%. But the percent increase over the previous cost seems to decline the more outposts there are. I should note as well that I did test some detaching, and it works exactly as you would expect for production cost. Costs simply revert back to what they would have been with one less outpost. I also completed at least one infrastructure building in the city, and that didn't appear to affect production costs for anything either. Now let's move on to quarters. And I noticed something interesting, specifically that the increase for the number of quarters seems to be the same as the increase per outpost. On my, second, or on my first city with two outposts, adding one Cyclopean Fortress increased the costs of any second quarter equivalent to what it would have been adding a third outpost but without building a quarter. So on a city with two attached outposts and one quarter, the cost of the next quarter is the same as a city with three attached outposts and no quarters. And going back and looking at uh, some of the uh, different production costs and some of my save files, this seems to play out regardless of the number of outposts that I had attached, at least going up to three outposts. So with my two attached outposts, I ultimately tracked this up to 10 total quarters. I only tracked the Cyclopean to 8, at which point I went into the Classical Era. So here you can see some of my data on just the flat production costs of the quarters per number of quarters that I already have in my city with two attached outposts. Now there's a lot of information here, but here are some of the main points regarding the different tests that I've done. So each additional quarter increases the cost of the next quarter, that is obvious. The flat increase of the production gets bigger the more quarters that you have, but the percentage increase gets smaller. Second, extractors do not have an increase in production costs. However, building them does increase the cost of other quarters just like any other quarter or attached outpost does. So when you build an extractor, although their cost isn't going to increase, it is going to increase the cost of your maker's quarters or your agriculture quarters or whatever it is. Infrastructure cost does seem to remain flat regardless of city size. Between zero quarters and 10 quarters, the cost of my granary was exactly the same and it didn't seem to get impacted by anything else that I did. So this seems to just be a flat cost and it's just determined by the base cost of the infrastructure. Now, ERA also does not appear to affect the industry costs of anything. Going between uh, 
ancient and classical had absolutely no impact, and I held off on constructing any new quarters there. I also went from classical to medieval without constructing additional quarters, and there wasn't increase wasn't an increase in costs in that situation either. So the era you're in doesn't seem to have any impact on the industry costs. Holy sites do still count the same in the same manner as other quarters. So if you build a holy site in one of your cities, you are going to increase the production cost of the other quarters equivalent to what it would have increased to given that you built any other quarter. It doesn't matter what it is. Now, as you would expect for number six, the buyout cost increases on quarters as the production cost increases. However, both extractor and infrastructure buyouts also seem to increase, but very marginally, as more quarters are added, despite not increasing in production costs themselves. Now, I noticed going through the game that they seem to just increase in, in buyout cost by about one gold per turn. And when I finished a quarter, it became about two gold per turn. And I'm I, looking back on it now, I can't determine if it's only when I bought out a quarter that it would increase uh, by two on a turn. But Anyway, j just from what I've observed, it does seem that the buyout costs increase as your city gets bigger, even for the infrastructure and the extractors where their base production does not increase regardless of the size of the city. So finally, quarters in other cities and extractors in unattached outposts do not appear to affect production costs in a given city. So if you have one really big mega city and you just found another tiny city somewhere else, it's not going to be impacted by how big your other city is. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to determine the exact function that determines the cost increase of quarters. That's not really my specialty, but hopefully someone will be able to crack it. Now I did also take the pyramids to see some of the effects. Here are some of the results on my first city with two attached outposts and 10 quarters as well as my second city with no attached territories and no quarters whatsoever. You can see that the production cost for a city with no quarters and no attached territory seems to be affected in the expected way. A 25% reduction is equivalent to modifying the base cost by 0.75, and when doing that for the quarters here, the results round up to about 53 approximately, uh, 52.5, and it rounds up appropriately. Now, where it's less clear is in my larger city with the two attached outposts and 10 quarters. You can see the production cost reduction for each of the quarters that I tracked. What I suspect is happening here is that the modifier is actually just applying to the base production cost. Obviously, it does not apply to the total cost. Otherwise, these would all be reduced by 25%. But it is impossible to verify this theory at this point without knowing the function that determines cost inflation for quarters. And while I'm at it, there have been a few questions about whether the pyramids reduce the buyout cost for quarters. The answer is yes, but also not by 25%. And in fact, to make matters more confusing, the buyout cost reduction was also not consistent with the production cost reduction. So you can see some of this data here below. And you'll notice that the buyout cost reduction does not line up with the production cost reduction. You will see that it is relatively close to the production cost reduction, but not quite the same. I couldn't tell you why the effect on buyout seems to be greater than on production. I suspect it has something to do with gold inflation from the size of your city, as well as previous buyouts. I'll also note here that I found the pyramids actually reduced the influence buyout cost on my outposts. I didn't track this very closely, but I did just uh, check my influence costs on one turn, and then on the next turn, after I built the pyramids, I compared it to my previous cost. I don't know what the percentage reduction was or anything like that, but the influence cost was reduced for building the extractors as well as harbors after I completed the pyramids. Uh, I don't know how useful that is in practice, but uh, it is something you may be able to take advantage of. So now that we've looked at the pyramids and quarters, let's talk about units. Here are our base costs when picking the Mycenaeans, so the minus 20% reduction is already factored in. I tried to grab as many things as I could to reduce production costs. This included the Shu Gluttony Tenet for minus 10%, the Conscription Civic for minus 30%, 
the Aztecs for an additional minus 20%, and I also took the Ottomans specifically to test the mortar, since the Ottomans get 50% reduction on heavy weapon production cost. So if these production cost bonuses were additive, in other words, having two 20% discounts simply became a 40% discount, the production cost of the mortar would be zero or negative, depending on how the game would handle the logic. I already have a total of minus 100% production towards all units, and an additional minus 50% on heavy weapons. Instead of having zero or negative production, what I have is a production cost of 196, which is consistent with how the math works if these bonuses are applied multiplicatively. You can think of this as being sequential, so one bonus is applied first, say minus 20%, and then each subsequent bonus then affects the new cost. With how this works, it doesn't matter what order these bonuses are considered in, so you don't need to wonder about that. They all result in the same outcome. Now, I didn't keep as close a track of this, uh, because that wasn't the purpose of this video, but I can also tell you that the production cost modifiers for units also seem to affect their buyout costs, but not nearly by 25%. For instance, a swordsman went from 414 buyout cost to 377 buyout cost after taking the conscription civic, which reduces production by 30%. The buyout cost reduction was 8.9%. So there is definitely a major gold inflation factor to consider that is being applied separately from just simply the production cost, but I couldn't tell you exactly what that is, and the wiki uh, people haven't really seemed to figure it out yet either, so godspeed to them on that. So that's all I have for now. Hopefully some folks can figure out some of the equations used to calculate these things, but I hope in the meantime that you found this information useful. In the future, once we know a little bit more about some of these behind-the-scenes calculations, we'll be able to talk more precisely about the strategy of maximizing production or maximizing your gold buyouts, but for now we'll have to rely a bit on instinct and incomplete knowledge. So thanks for tuning in, I'll see you next time.